Hi, I'm Sharon Clues. I am currently the Interim Director of Learning and Organisational Development at Warner Brothers. And I have been working in leadership development, uh, learning and organisational effectiveness for probably the last five, six years. It's about confidence and uh, that's probably the first one. And the second one for me is um, self-love. I see plenty of women who um, are not confident and who really don't rate themselves, don't like themselves. Um, and, and I think as a result of that, get a little bit of the imposter syndrome going, you know? Um, in my experience, that imposter syndrome actually starts with being confident and confident around who you are and how you portray yourself as well. So um, I think those skills are vital. And, and also we could do with a lot more of the self-love stuff, right? Because there's just not enough of it. Um, but I also think some of the, you know, some of the, the great natural skills that women have, um, we are really fabulous at networking. We, we <clears throat> you know, without being gender biased at all um, there's a significant difference between conversations that men have with people and that women have with people um, i think women can naturally ask a lot more uh, questions they become more attuned to uh, what's happening and i think some of that's empathy i think some of those skills are um, you know definitely uh, being vulnerable, um, you know, I think there's a, probably a little bit less ego involved um, with women who are genuinely empathetic and vulnerable, not in comparison to men, by the way, this is just about, you know, not my experience of successful women. Um, and I think, you know, women who are really good at networking, it's, it, it's one of the most undermined skills. And I think it is an undermined skill because it doesn't necessarily get done very well. I think there's always, um, it feels like that there's an objective to networking when in fact it should just be about how many people you can connect with or how many other people you can connect via your network. You know, I don't like to think of it as what am I going to get out of this at the end? This is a, you know, no, I don't know that person. Perhaps I could be a little bit more curious or perhaps somebody could introduce me. You know, it's not about getting something out of it. I don't think initially it is, it is genuinely about who, you know, how well connected you are. <clears throat> and then it, ultimately it will be how well you use those networks and those connections. Um, and I think the other two kind of more definite skills are around assertiveness and negotiation. And they're all tied in initially, obviously, with that confidence part at the beginning. Um, but I definitely think being able to be assertive in the way that you speak and assertive in the way that your body language is, assertive in what it is that you want to do without making any apologies to that um, is really, really important. And also the, just the art of negotiation, you know, being able to negotiate with people around uh, around terms, around what your boundaries are. Um, a lot of women I know don't have a lot of those boundaries and tend to try and do the multitasking. And yes, I can say yes to everybody. Um, and yeah, in my experience, we can't do that forever. <laughs> there is plenty of science out there that just says that we have very different brains, um, you know, male, female brains. And the vulnerability and um, and empathy and compassion, I think, are are two of the strongest uh, mothering, nurturing tools that we're given, um, whether we use them or not in that particular way. They enable people to expose enough of ourselves so that we feel connected to somebody else. Um, there's always something that will happen to somebody else that we can relate to and that we can understand. Always. There is, uh, my experience has, has never been, I've got nothing, do you know, from an empathetic perspective. 
Um, and if we start thinking and leading with compassion in that we start with the other person first. So what experience is this person having? You know, if we're going into a feedback meeting, where are they right now? You know, have they been in a difficult situation? Have they had a tough commute in? Have they had a horrible weekend? You know, being able to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and understand how a piece of information will be received, I think is absolutely critical. Um, and I do think that's why, you know, it, it, there's no coincidence. I think it was a Forbes or a Harvard article recently, which said, you know, why have these countries all done better out of the COVID-19 responses because they've had female leaders? <clears throat> um, and that isn't always the case. That's not, um, you know, there are some countries obviously that have done well with male leadership, but, you know, and everybody will cite the examples, Jacinda Ardern, um, you know, during the horrible attack that was in New Zealand, you know, the beginning of last year, I think that was, where she literally went and had compassion and empathy um, and vulnerability with people she didn't know. Um, and I, I think there's, and I, I've only actually un discovered this recently, that I believe one of the things that enables you to have compassion and vulnerability and empathy um, is trust. And I think if you, I have, I have this thing which I coined as, you know, the, the IP is the PI, which for me is the ingoing premise is positive intent. And if I go and have a conversation with you, I will trust you implicitly until you disprove me otherwise. Um, and I think that the power that those women have with positive track records, and not just about vulnerability and responsibility, but they trust that it will be okay to put themselves out there. Um, and that's why they get so much back.